Thank you for joining us for the Japan Foundation online event. My name is Shunko Takekawa, Senior Arts Program Officer at the Japan Foundation London. As the trailer you just saw indicates, today's event is linked to Japan Foundation Touring Film Program 2024, the largest Japanese film screening project in the UK. Although some screenings are still taking place at some of our partner venues, the program will draw to a close very soon, at the end of March. As such, we would like to reflect on the program, as well as once again reflecting on Japanese cinema overall, by taking this year's program theme, Memories, Times and Reflections in Japanese Cinema, and using it as an opportunity to explore what makes Japanese cinema memorable, together with our panel from the UK, Japan, and beyond. Let me introduce today's panel. They are Kimbara Yuka, one of Japan's leading film journalists, thank you, and then Isidaka Kenji, programming director at the Tokyo International Film Festival and the Film Academic. Julian Ross, a curator, researcher, and a writer based in Amsterdam, who has been involved in many international film festivals, and James Much, a film producer, writer, and director, and a well-known uh, international film critic with more than 20 years experience in the industry. And lastly, Espen Bell, independent researcher and a film writer currently working at BFI Archive. Espen will read the panel as a moderator. Isaka-san and Kimbara-san will be assisted by Bethan Jones. So thank, thanks to all for your time. Some of you may recognize that they were also all part of last year's roundtable discussion marking the 20th anniversary of Japan Foundation Touring Film Program. Today's session is admittedly also a kind of follow-up to the previous roundtable discussion as well as, as we all felt that time wasn't enough last time. But don't worry if you didn't join us the previous time, there should be plenty of new discussions and the food of for thought from this discussion. They would each bring their own memorable Japanese films to the table, but thanks all to everyone, everyone watching today who gave us your almost memorable Japanese films. That list will be shared with you during the session, so keep an eye on the chat box. Next, housekeeping matters. Today's event will be recorded as we are using in a webinar function. Your names will not be viewable by other attendees. However, I strongly recommend you to keep your audio and video muted throughout just in case. If you have any questions for the panelists, please use the Q and A function to send in, in, in at any time. Remember that attendees question can be seen by everybody else so that you can upvote a particular question placed by another person if you would like it answered or if it is the same as yours. Simply click that thumb up icon next to the question you wish to upvote. Unfortunately, due to the time restrictions, we may not be able to pick up all, the, all of the questions you ask, so my apologies in advance. Also, I would like to encourage you to, you know, give your comments in chat box if you like, but please, you know, consider other people as well. So, lastly, as always, we will send you online questionnaire, so please spare a short moment to complete it to help improve our future events. That's all from me, so I would like to hand it over to Espen to lead the panel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Junko. Um, and hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, and thank you to everyone who submitted a uh, film um, that they find particularly memorable. Um, we've got the list with us, so I'm hoping to be bringing some of those titles in as the discussion um, proceeds. Um, to start us off, I'm going to ask in turn each one of the panellists um, for one particular title that they've nominated that they found particularly memorable and to sort of elaborate on on that specific film an event around it and and how it links with with wider discussion um so i think first um kimbara san do you like to go first okay hi sasoku ja ano watashi no wasure gatai eiga toshite masumura yasuzo kantoku no 
制作の妻を選びました。Yes, so my memorable Japanese film is Seisaku's Wife by Yasuzo Masumura. えのその理由としてはあの日本映画は作品としては彼の描くヒロインは、まあ、大抵若尾綾子さんという女優が演じてるんですけど、まあ、あのすごくわきまえない女なんですね。ここがもうのものすごく自分にとっては今に至るまで大きな,なんか軸になっています。The reason I've chosen this film, it's, it's an interesting film in, in Japanese film history, but back when I was watching movies in my, in my teens and in my twenties, There weren't many women I saw on screen that I could look up to as a role model. There were a lot of passive women in Japanese films,、um, no one very proactive.、Uh, and as I was searching for that kind of, of female character,、um, I came across Yasuzo Masumura's films、uh, and his、uh, female protagonists, as, you come, as we have in Seisaku's Wife. Thank you, thank you, Kimbara san.、Um, maybe uh, James, um, would you like to go? I think you, like myself, kind of、uh, <laughs> into Japanese cinema through a sort of style of film or styles of film that were、mm -hmm. um, sort of prominent、um, in the late sort of 90s into the early noughties、yeah. that kind of put Japan back on the map in terms of maybe the art house circuit and, and,、mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the sort of film festival circuit. So, yeah, if you'd like to. Oh, sure. Sure.、Um, and yeah, my, my, my choice was Ring,、uh, you know, from 1998. Although it didn't actually come over to the UK until、um, I think a couple of years after.、Uh, it was a bit later than it was in Japan. But、um, on a personal level, yeah, I, I was a, a horror fan, a genre fan.、Uh, I was familiar ish with Japanese cinema, but mostly、uh, dubbed films, Godzilla films, maybe some Sonny Chiba films like The Street Fighter. So. And this was coming at a time where the, the mainstream horror genre internationally and from the West was very stale. We were in the post scream boom still of like teen ironic slasher films. So when Ring came out, even just the poster was、um, something very, very memorable with the malevolent eye staring at you and the, you know, the dark hair over the face,、uh, exactly as in the image. So even seeing it there now is still quite creepy.、Um, and also it came with the incredibly. Powerful hook, the premise, you know, the, the, the cursed video. And this, of course, coming before you know, YouTube, TikTok, everything.、Uh, the seven days death curse, the phone call, and then Sadako calling out of the TV to kill people in an unspecified way, which the books go into in a lot of detail, but not the film.、Um, and yeah, seeing it in the cinema was a fantastic experience, which really left a mark on me. Just the sound design,、uh, the way it was shot, the way it was framed. And it's, It didn't have the same obvious treatment of like the innocent and the guilty being punished、um, as Western films. So for me, it was quite, it was actually quite mind blowing. And I was one of the ones who afterwards received a phone call from somebody and thought about <laughs> maybe not picking it up. So I, I think it had a massive impact. I mean, obviously, commercially, as you say, this is one of the films that really put Japan on the map. It launched the, not just Japanese horror. And we have, of course, had the grudge. And I think that led into guys like Miki becoming a lot more famous、uh, internationally. But I think it、uh, revitalized the, the Asian horror genre. We, we had this huge wave of Asian films then moving on beyond horror, becoming popular in the West,、um, as well as、uh, Sadako herself becoming a pop culture icon. And, and yeah, it was really my, as well as being a fantastic film, which I think still holds up today, even though it's a bit nostalgic. I think it was, a,、uh, as you were saying, like a great gateway,、uh, I think, for a lot of us around about that time, getting people into. The wider world of Japanese、uh, cinema through something more accessible, like a genre film. Though a very, I would say, very aesthetically and thematically、uh, interesting and well crafted genre film.、Uh, maybe something we'll touch on a bit more later is I, I'm not sure if we really have the, that same kind of gateway for people、um, at the moment. Oh, thank you. And、uh, yeah, no, I, I had a similar sort of experience. It was admittedly on the TV, but watching <laughs> BK's audition. I'm not really a horror fan. <laughs> kind of, yeah, it was memorable for a, a whole <laughs> um, but, um, in, including the fact that it's, it's incredibly well, well made as well.、Mm. As, 
Um, and and maybe yeah, Julian, um, you highlighted another film which for me was a was an early sort of gateway film into into Japanese film and Japanese culture widely. Hi everybody. Yeah, I chose Violent Cop by Takeshi Kitano, um, which is yeah a film I watched when I moved to England when I was uh, fourteen. Um, so I'm half Japanese, half British, and I grew up in Tokyo until I was fourteen. And uh, when I was in Japan, I was not aware of uh, Vito Takeshi um, as a filmmaker, only a TV personality. Um, and I'd been watching uh, television, like variety shows like uh, Sekai Marumie. Um, yeah, um, the the world as, as you see, I suppose. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, Beats Takeshi was always dressed up in... Uh, crazy costumes, rather silent, but always the kind of uh, comedic figure. And um, when I moved to uh, England, um, some friends of mine started asking me uh, about Vito Takeshi, um, but as a you know serious art house filmmaker, and I had no idea what they were talking about. Um, so I borrowed the DVDs from my friend and started watching them. Um, and Violent Cop was the first one I watched. And to my surprise, many of uh, one, one of the scenes um, took place right in my neighborhood where I grew up. Um, so I was watching this film with my family while uh, Yakuza was being beaten up by somebody with a baseball bat. Um, we were just pointing, oh, that's where I got, used to go, get picked up from uh, preschool to go to preschool. <laughs> and um, also, you know, the map of, um, it, it was uh, Kitashinaga, Higashinaga, so uh, <laughs> northern, <laughs> northern, and, uh, yeah, eastern Shinagawa district in uh, the east of uh, Tokyo. And they, they'd, from each cut, they'd be jumping from one place to the other all over the place. And we were talking about how the whole kind of, um, yeah, the, the scene just doesn't make sense because we really knew the, knew the uh, area very well. That, that's where I grew up. So I had a very <laughs> interesting experience watching this very violent uh, Beats Takeshi film with my family um, uh, and paying more attention to the location than the violent actions that were taking place in front of our eyes. So for that reason, it's a memorable film for me. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And I, yeah, talking about his his position uh, or his character, Beto Takeshi, I've, I've sort of tried to explain to people that it's the same guy as from Takeshi, the Takeshi of Takeshi's Castle, which I see a lot of people in the UK grew up with, you know, Craig Charles doing the voiceover and, uh, you know, heavily edited and stuff. So um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and yes, uh, Ishizaka-san, um, I think you've got a Naruse Mikio film that you'd like to talk about. Okay. え、そうなんです。私はナルセの浮き雲を選んだんだけど、ノスタルジーとかあると思うんだけども、あの、つまりね、日本映画の中に描かれるそのノスタルジー、つまりあ、昔は良かったなとかね、あの時代は良かったなとか、そのそういう過去に対する憧れみたいなものが、あの、すご
and the sense of nostalgia within film and looking back to the films that make us think about the good old days and 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 look at the past through rose tinted spectacles maybe is very interesting uh, and in that sense that's that's kind of why i picked up on on floating clouds of kigomo and love letter要するにね、あの、つまり日本ってあの、戦争中にあの、女after the war, uh, Japan was was devastated, and then it went through this period of economic recovery and became the affluent uh, country that it became. And so, a lot of nostalgia within, within film looks back on this post-war period of the 1950s, um, with films like Always Sunset on Third Street. Um, but Floating Clouds is it's kind of the opposite of that, um, because you have this this man and this woman coming back from Indochina um having an affair and just gradually the situation gets gets worse and worse um it's the opposite of what you expect of this flourishing post-war economy and, and the arrival of democracy in japan um the, these two characters are are bad role models they're they're the opposite of of what we heard just now with the, the female role model in, in seisaku's wife um they look back and think that their life in Vietnam was actually better uh, than than um, their current life in Japan. It's an antithesis. Uh, and I'll leave it there for now. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, I think on on that, I'll, I'll sort of circle back to each um, the points that that each each panelist has raised. But I think just while we're on the theme of 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 nostalgia or or, or Borky or um, we could bring in very quickly the the idea of um well the, the the film that overwhelmingly i don't know if wins the correct term but was topped the topped the uh the list in terms of attendees was uh um ozu yasujiro's um tokyo monogatari or tokyo story um which which might be an interesting uh, not not so much the film per se but the idea of ozu and maybe some of the themes not only are they obviously um for a lot of people very um, nostalgic films. As I saw, I went to Onamichi, the uh, Ega Shiryokan uh, in September, and there was very much that kind of atmosphere with his films, but but also they they deal with the idea of memories and the past and nostalgia, which is obviously the theme of this year's Touring Film Festival. So I wondered if anyone wanted to, you know, come in and maybe comment on on the, the idea of nostalgia and that period of filmmaking in 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 general, or specifically to certain titles, or um, Ichizaka-san, or 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 anyone else. Um,やはりあの戦後の復興の中で家族の形がま解体していって、かつてあったはずの絆が見つからないま親子たちの話でやっぱりその何か失われてしまっているっていうものへでの何かこう開墾とか教習がすごくあると思うんですけど、さっきそれは
それがなんかこうやっぱり日本経済がすごくどんどん下がって失われたロストジェネレーションの子どもたちにむしろ私は岩井さんと同世代ですけどその彼と同世代の人よりもまあなんか若い人の方にすごく受けているっていうのはちょっと小津さんと同じ視線があるかと思います。でちょうどあの岩井さんが出てきた時って私もお、まあ、同世代なので是枝さんも出てきた時ですけど是枝さんもあのやっぱ失われた記憶っていうものが当初すごく大きなテーマにしていてまあ彼らはなんか来たるべき失われていくものへのなんか予知夢っていうかちょっと何か感じていたものを先に出したのかなみたいなそういうなんか感覚はずっと私は持っていますね。Hi.、Um, well, everyone's familiar with、uh, Tokyo's t o r y、um, this, this family in post war Japan that's, that's broken apart, the, the bonds that, that should be there aren't there, they're lost. There's, some, there's a, a sense of, of,、um, of learning something、uh, through this film. But I think the reason that Ozu is popular and the reason that Iwai Shunji is popular are maybe. Have the, have the same、uh, roots because the, the, the world of, of Iwai Shunji is a world where everything is lost.、Um, and for the, the generation in Japan that lived through the, what we call the lost generation,、um, this is something that, that resonates with them. I'm the same generation as, as Iwai Shunji myself, but rather than us of his generation, it seems that his films resonate more with the younger generation.、Um, and I think it's maybe because he has a, a similar a view, viewpoint to that of, of Ozu. Another director, the same generation of, of, as Iwai, is Koreeda. And when he started out, again, there was a sense of, of something lost in his work. Yes, I'm sorry. 今の話でつなげるとね、岩井俊二の人気って、その世代によっても違ったり、それから西洋と東洋でもあの違いがあって、で、あの、私はまあアジアの映画のね、えー、結構見てる人間なんですけども、えー、アジアにおける岩井俊二の人気っていうのは、まあ、凄まじいものがあると思います。あの、ある意味ですね、岩井俊二的なテーマを盛り込んだアジアの映画というのが、もうここ20年ぐらいですね、非常にたくさん各国でできていて、えー、特に東アジアですね、韓国、中国、台湾、えーまあ、香港、えー、このあたりの映画はですね、あこれ、岩井さんのあそこだみたいなね、あのいろいろその岩井映画をフォローして、えーね、中に入れてくるようなものが。本当に多いです。それで、あの、まあ、私は、あの、大学の教師ですけれども、えー、日本にやってくる留学生は、本当にね、岩井俊二、あの、愛してるというか、出来合いですね。あの、北野とか是枝は、あの、尊敬してリスペクトとかって言うんですけど、出来合いしてるのは岩井俊二ですね。もうみんなそうですね。<笑> The,、uh, since you've mentioned、uh, Iwai Shunji, the popularity of his work, it's true, it does differ from generation to generation. There's also a difference between East and West、uh, when it comes to his work. I'm someone who wa watches a lot of Asian films, and Iwai's work is frighteningly popular in Asia.、Um, Over the, for the last 20 years or so, there have been so many films coming out of East Asia, in particular、uh, China, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, that deal with themes and motifs、um, that could be straight out of Iwai Shunji films. You, you watch and you think, oh, this is out of this is Iwai.、Um, I teach at university and we have a lot of exchange students who love Iwai Shunji.、Um, and it's a, it's a different kind of. of Of love, of feeling that they have for his work. They respect Kitano and they respect Koreeda, but they love Iwai. No, great, thank you. And I, I think that's, that brings us nicely into a sort of,、um, well, what both Julian and James have discussed about this idea of, yeah,、uh, you know, different films having, finding different audiences and being memorable for, for different, you know, areas, whether it's the West or. 
mm-hmm. or other parts of Asia or people, you know, obviously like Julian, who have experience of both Japan and, and, and the UK and other parts of Europe. So, yeah, I wondered if if maybe James or, or Julian would like to um, add to anything that's been... Um, I mean, sure. I can. I can just just in terms of uh, not just so much Tokyo story itself, but just the list in general. Um, it was very. It was interesting to see the list uh, from the participants, and uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way at all, but probably not very surprising. Uh, just in terms of the directors who were very very heavily represented, whether it's um, Ozu Kurosawa or um, Koreeda, um, and kind of taking a step back from even the ideas of nostalgia and everything. I think it also sort of reflects. Uh, the the reception uh, of Japanese cinema in the UK, which I think is a, to a large extent is, you know, influenced by the kind of films we see released over here. Whether it's the classic films being redone by the BFI in seasons quite quite regularly, I think it's fair to say, or just in terms of the kinds of films. Like any time a creative film comes out, you know that'll get released um, over here. Whereas we don't really see, without going back to talk about the early two thousands. Um, as I referenced before with Ring, we don't really see the same kind of variety, I think, of Japanese cinema in in, in cinemas here in the UK so much anymore. Uh, I, so I think while uh, I completely agree with everything about the nostalgia value and everything, that it's interesting because probably for Western or UK viewers, you wouldn't really maybe tie into the same nostalgia uh, for some of these films. And I don't think uh, why he's so popular or well-known in the UK, just mainly because so many of his films haven't really come out or screened here widely because they fall kind of outside of the the circle of Japanese films which we keep seeing in the UK uh, and the films which then get released which are limited to a fairly uh, set number of directors so it, it's interesting though to see that uh, these films are pop some of these films are popular both in the east and west though for different reasons yeah thank you thank you um yeah, Julian, did you want to, you, uh, one of the other films you, you highlighted um, brings us into a couple of the films that have been mentioned on on here, Baron or Soreto, A Funeral Parade of Roses, I think you mentioned, and the idea of, that that's an interesting film that really uh, in the in the West was almost unknown, maybe until about 15 years ago, and through Master Cinema and subsequently Arbelos and, and the BFI releasing it, and it's, and, and it's sort of found its audience again with you know the, the way that it deals with lgbtq issues and 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 the, and and the sort of politics of the 60s so it's found its audience but um yeah maybe um wanted to support sure about not necessarily just about that film but about uh, maybe related things about films that are finding audiences now sure yeah i mean um uh the reason why i picked funeral you know, parade of roses was um yeah i remember uh the moment i watched this film and this uh this film opened a whole new world to me. Um, uh, w- what I had been seeing from Jap- Japan in terms of cinema up to that point, I was maybe 18 years old when that came out on DVD in England, was, uh, you know, Godzilla, uh, some samurai films and Yakuza films and some anime. So quite limited uh, considering the kind of breadth of what Japanese cinema has to offer. I only got interested in Japanese cinema when I left Japan. So. I had kind of limited access in that sense to what's out there. And this release really was a game changer for me because I was so interested in 60s uh, new wave cinema from particularly Europe in that moment. And I had no idea that something even, you know, similar or resonating with that kind of new wave movement took place in Japan. So, um, yeah, even before Oshima, for me, at least, I watched uh, Fino Parade of Roses and... Um, a whole new world opened to me, not just in terms of cinema, but also lifestyle. You know, I having living, having lived in uh, East uh, Tokyo, Shinagawa, I, I'd never visited Shinjuku as a kid. It's not really a place you go when you're 10 years old. Um, so, you know, I had no idea what Shinjuku was like and what it was like in the 60s. So, yeah, and I, I think, you know, it, it is thanks to, uh, you know, labels uh, and initiatives like Masters of Cinema, but also Third Window um, that, uh, you know, open up a world of Japanese cinema beyond the kind of usual names and usual kind of genres that we often see. I think those, um, um, yeah, those initiatives, those DVD labels have really helped, at least in the UK and Europe, uh, uh, get some of these films that don't fit into those categories recognized and um, people like me via those titles get um, interested in you know what else Japanese cinema has to offer I think 
No, thank you. And I think uh, you're absolutely right to to, to highlight, yeah, as you say, titles like, like Third Window and others who are, who are doing things that may be slightly more, more off the beaten track, unusual, quite, um, you know, films that are even maybe not particularly well known, even even in Japan sometimes. Um, I just uh, referring back to the list, I, I noticed that uh, um, a couple of people had, had mentioned a couple of films by um, uh, Kawase Naomi. Uh, Naomi Kawase, um, and I thought I'd sort of tie a little bit what we're talking about here back to what um, um, Kimbara-san was saying at the beginning of, you know, strong female characters, whether it's directors in, in the case of Kawase, who someone who actually often works outside of Japan or in, in co-productions because it's it's still quite difficult for her and, and other people, um, maybe artistically as much as as as, as a gender for, for working in Japan. But um yeah, and referring back to the idea of, of strong female characters, uh, um, and and I, someone else has also um, um, highlighted another Masamura film, um, Akai Tenchi, I think Red Angel, um, I think was the one I might might be saying. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. So which which again, you know, he was he was a, a director who was I think quite well appreciated in Japan, but maybe has only recently been started to be appreciated in in the west and you know does have quite a few strong um female characters like mm. well, um wakao akao wakao i think who worked with him quite a lot as well mm. so yeah maybe uh, kimbara san or anyone would like to talk a little bit about about that maybe妻と一緒にエルスプラス虐殺という吉田義重監督の作品を選んだんですけど、吉田義重監督はまあ小津安次郎監督にのことをかなりきつい批評を書いて面と向かって大津さんと対峙したっていう伝説の持ち主で、ま
、ジャパニーズホラーね、つまりリング、えー、に代表されるものって、私なんかが見ると、やっぱりそのウエスタンのホラーって、すごくキリスト教、一神教のキリスト教の世界の産物っていう気がして、つまりそのモンスターが、悪魔が襲ってくるっていうね。で、それに比べるとリングでも、それから昔の怪談と呼ばれる、あの、古い、古典的なホラー映画も日本にありますけれども、あの、こういうものって、つまりその、えー、幽霊がね、ぼーっとそこに立ってるだけで怖いみたいな、その、あの、そんな襲ってくるばっかりでもないですよね。あの、日本の幽霊って。で、これやっぱりその、なんていうかな、あの、新疆のキリスト教と違う文化だなっていうような気がするんですけど、あの、ホラー映画の背後にある、宗教的な、あの、違いみたいなものって感じますか ?I'd like to ask、uh, James a question actually about Japanese horror as represented、mm -hmm. by, by Ringu.、Mm -hmm. um, when I see Western horror films, I feel the influence of, of Christianity, of monotheism.、Um, there's always a monster or a devil who is, is attacking. Whereas with Ringu, with, with the Japanese classic Kaidan ghost stories, the ghost isn't necessarily attacking.、Um, they can be just standing there and creating a sense of, of, of fear and un unease.、Uh, and I feel in that a cultural difference.、Um, so I was wondering if you, if you feel that as well, this, this difference that comes from a different religious background. Um, I, yes, I, absolutely. I, I think when you, especially when you, you look at some key. Stages, I, I guess, of horror. I mean, speaking from a Western point of view, you know, going through the different phases through the、uh, folklore into religion、um, as well. And then, of course, the exorcist,、uh, with its、uh, dealing with like、um, the Catholic Church,、uh, mm -hmm. something which has come up again over and over. So I think there is that, there is a different treatment. I mean, just culturally, you get influenced by the religion where you come from. And without going off on、um, too much of a tangent, it's something Korean cinema and horror is dealing with very. Interestingly, over the last 10, 15 years, specifically the, the conflict between Christianity in Korea and、uh, Korean shamanism.、Uh, there's a lot of horror films very specifically dealing with the, this, this kind of、um, tension between them. But yes, I think there is definitely a difference. But I think a lot of, even when I see something like Ring, for example, I think it's very influenced by Western horror、uh, in certain parts. And I think certain parts of it. Uh, not just in how it deviates from the much more complex and quite strange source novels it comes from, but in terms of its cinematic techniques. And I think, as much as I absolutely love horror, a lot of horror films maybe subconsciously draw on cultural backgrounds, including religion, but also it's down to the amount of craft which goes in, or sometimes the lack of craft. Uh, kind of which goes into it as well, and the ways in which horror films quite naturally、uh, feed off. International trends,、uh, I think, going around. So it's,、um, it's something I could probably talk about for a few hours, to be honest. But yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very interesting question. There's a lot of very interesting <laughs> examples. But、um, yeah, so, yeah, 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 y e お化けがいたずらするような、その土着のアニミズム的なものと仏教との戦いみたいなテーマがあったり、フィリピンだとやっぱりキリスト教とあのカソリックですね、それが来る前の土着の、えー、お化け、えー、との戦いみたいな。結構ね、その,あの植民地になった国々のホラーっていうのはまたすごく面白いなとテーマとか思って。If I could add to that,、uh, James, I, I agree with you. It's, it's very, very interesting.、Um, and, and Asian horror is, is particularly interesting for me. And the countries,、uh, horror films coming out of countries that have experience of, of being colonies.、Mm. Um, Thai horror, for example,、yeah. you have the conflict between、uh, Buddhism and the indigenous ghosts、mm. and presences.、Um, And then in Philippine horror, Philippine horror films,、uh, the, the, this, you have the conflict between Christianity and the, the pre Christian indigenous local spirits, ghosts that existed there before. It's very interesting. 
Absolutely. I, I without t- taking this off on a tangent, I mean, Indonesian folk horror at the moment, very specifically dealing with this as well. This clash between the <laughs> the older spiritual beliefs and then the modernity, which is kind of encroaching um, into it. So I, absolutely, I, I think religion uh, and culture uh, and changing culture and changing ideas of modernity. And as you say, uh, <laughs> colonialism uh, and the history of countries all, all feeds into horror. And that's one of the reasons I, I love horror so much is it can be... Um, in the right hands can be a very creative, fascinating way of tackling these subjects. Um, as well as speaking as a producer, a massive headache. So I'm currently working on an East-West horror and actually matching up the cultural things is not. <laughs> Finding a way to make a film which really speaks to everyone is very difficult. And that's why I think Ring did it by just cutting through everything with this very, very effective, very simple premise, which translates pretty much everywhere in the world. You know, the seven day death curse and the <laughs> that side of things to... Okay. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any have other thoughts that they'd like to bring in on, on that topic at all, Julian or, or in Kimbarasan or, or or any other topics that we'd we'd um you'd like to bring up based on, on the list of any of the films, anything that surprised you about oh uh Kimbarasan also.私はあのジュリアンさんとかジェムさんにぜひ聞きたいのはあのそのそのイギリス人の方にもなんか共有できる恐ろしさだったんですか。どういうあのあの作品群がものすごいイギリスの方に受け入れられた背景にはどういうことがあるのかぜひ伺いたいんですけど。ちなみにあの三池さんと北野さ
not just so much the violence because a lot of these films are not markedly more violent than the films maybe you were seeing in the West and the UK, whether you know commercial films or indie films. But uh, they were being marketed and brought certainly with this promise of like over the top mayhem or or even like two degrees sort of rationalized through like art house over the top mayhem. So it, it was a very, very interesting time with quite a lot of interesting mixed messages, uh, I think, but done very, very successfully. Um, and I would throw a battle royale as a great example into the mix. It was this idea, oh, you're going to see this Japanese film where kids are killing kids. You know, it's it was partly for shock value, partly the marketing. Um, I, I don't think necessarily it was just the violence itself. I think it was the, the exoticization of the violence in a sort of Asian degree. And I think that sort of led into this uh, I, other ideas of Japan as well. People were searching for ways to quite easily market Japanese films, whether it was the violence, whether it was the quirkiness, for example. And I think that's led very directly onto the Korean wave, which we're still sort of experiencing. So. No, thank you. Yeah, I was I was going to say well, well, I'll I'll move quickly on just to the um the the final section before we do the mm. Q. We've got enough time for Q and A. Uh, we'll talk about some more recent films, but no, just want to thank everyone for that. And I just echo I think what James is saying about this idea of it was marketed in a particularly kind of exoticized and maybe slightly mm. you know orientalized way, but I think it was maybe just seen as as a way of trying to push some of these films which people might not have otherwise in, engaged with um and there were some i mean hannah b is an example of mm. a film that there's very little violence it's strong when it occurs but actually most of the film is actually quite a quite a beautiful and soft film about this these these people's relationships and um so i think yeah it was a way of maybe getting people to watch a film that they might not have otherwise watched um uh, yeah, thank you. I, I would just quickly um, ask, uh, we just thought it would be interesting to to maybe briefly discuss some very contemporary films. So um, there was a, a, a number of films on, on the list submitted by attendees were featured in this year's um, uh, touring film uh, programme. So um, we had a couple of titles that we thought might be particularly interesting to talk about, but if there was any that any of the panellists had, had highlighted that were on the list of from this year, that they maybe wanted to comment on, or um, or if not, I can I can throw a couple of titles out to see if anyone um, would like to comment on those. Any particular? Okay, um, no, that's fine. Uh, we we had there was a couple that had been had been suggested. One was Hand or uh, Te, um, which was was a kind of recent film, which was done as a kind of. Uh, um, uh, memory or, or or not not memory. What's the what, um, the word? Um, kinen kinen. Sort of a um, anniversary uh, of of the uh, Roman porno. Uh, so maybe that was uh, and apparently it had been attracting uh, sort of large female audiences. Um, so maybe that is a film that someone would like to comment on. Um, if anyone's seen it, apparently it did did play in Rotterdam and um, or the, the other ones. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Kimbarasan <laughs> does あの、あの、it's all about the men uh, going after the women aggressively, drawing them into these sexual situations. Um, whereas with with hand, it's the it's the woman who who chooses uh, to pursue this path to put herself in these in this uh, position. Um, it's all voluntary, uh, and she chooses to go on this adventure. And so I can really understand why it's resonating with with female audiences. And I, I think that's what the director Matsui Daigo intended. Matsui Daigo, the director, 
演出家なんですよ。ステージディレクターで、あの、小さな劇団の主催者なんだけども、これがまた面白くてね、あの、5次元って言うんですけども、5ディメンションかな。あの、もう大学の男どもがそのまんま卒業してもずっと一緒にあの演劇やってるみたいなね、あの男だけの劇団で。で、えー、あの、だから演劇の方でも松井大吾って面白いので、ちょっと名前を覚えておいてくれると映画もすごくあの面白いんで、あの、いい監督だと思います。A word on the director, 松井大吾 is also a theater director. Um, a small theatre, Five Dimension, I think it's、uh, called.、Um, and he's been doing these plays、um, ever since he graduated university,、um, All Men.、Um, and they're very interesting. And his films are very interesting as well. So,、uh, one to watch. Brilliant, thank you.、Um, I think we should probably, yeah, if, if everyone's happy, we can move on to maybe a, there's a, been a few questions in the chat. Um, and some sort of comments related to,、um, I think, I'm not sure they've been voted on. So I'll, I'll just start from、um, for Desert Island. Maybe we'll do the Desert Island Disc question or Desert Island Film question if people would like that, if you had to pick.、Uh, so it may, may well be the same as the one you, you spoke about earlier. But、um, uh, Lawrence asks if there was.、Um, The if, if, desert island films. So,、um, I don't know if there's a sort of desert island disc in Japan, but the idea is that you, you, you pick six records and you have to pick one at the end and you talk about your life and then you pick one to take with you to save from the waves. So,、um, to put a spin on that,、um, if,、uh, yeah, if, if, if you maybe each had one, I know it's <laughs> one Japanese film、uh, that you would that you'd want to pick. To save and take to a desert island if that was the only thing you could ever watch again? Or is it, or is it too difficult? <laughs> 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 too difficult. We'll would be here for too long a time and I probably wanted a box set or something. So, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah well, we can do box sets, I'm sure. You、oh, could、no, yeah, do box sets. Yeah, <laughs> instead of the complete works of Shakespeare, you can have a You can have the, which they also give you for people that haven't listened to it.、Uh, we can,、uh, you can take a box set of a particular filmmaker or, or, a, or a style. Um, 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 yeah, I can go. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, pro- probably、uh, Tonari no Totoro, my neighbor Totoro.、Oh. Mm. Hopefully,、oh. I'm、uh, with my、oh. daughter who loves that film on this desert island.、Uh, yeah. Yeah, or Princess Mononoke, Mononoke Hime. Those two films I probably watch the most in my life,、uh, most times. Yeah. So,、um, yeah, they're re- endlessly rewatchable. So, I, it would be nice to take with me, I suppose. I know they're very traditional,、uh, yeah, yeah, you know,、uh, easily recognizable titles, but I think、uh, for good reason. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think yes. And, and it probably won't surprise many people to know that, that that did get a few, maybe not as many as I thought, but it did get, it did get a few,、um, a few, uh, cho- uh, cho- uh, it was chosen by a few people on,、uh, on the attendees list.、Um, thank you. Yeah. So I'll,、uh, we've got a question from Alex Rubin, who's a filmmaker、um, who's actually currently working on a, collabor- a Japanese collaboration,、uh, which Um, is going through BFI development at the moment, nothing to do with me. So,、uh, this is purely a, a third party question. But、um, he says,、uh, Thank you for the talk. And he's just、um, really appreciated the comments、um, on, on loss and nostalgia and youth. And、um, he wondered if, uh, uh, well, Kim Badasan, but, but anyone um, um, would like to comment on the recent films, The Zen Diary,、um, Zen no Niki, maybe, I don't,、uh, and Evil Does Not Exist, maybe、um, Aku, Aku ga Sonzai. Sh- Shinai. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm、mm-hmm. translating on the fly. I'm not sure if they have different titles, but may reflect a new wave of nostalgia. And, and, and he's quoted Quiet Rage.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, if anyone would like to. I, I... Anyone have any? Okay, yeah. Anyone, any, any, any comments on those? Or... Oh, yeah. Keep... I, I... Ah, Shaka-san, are you okay? Ah, I'm okay. 見てない大丈夫ですあそうですか。あの、全ダイアリーは、あの、かなり原作と変えていて、まあ、一人の小説家がすごく山奥で、その土地のものを自生しているたあの食材だけで料理を作るっていう、ものすごくあの究極の贅沢な料理なんですけれども
あのす,、まあ、すごく美術も含め素晴らしい豊かな作,作品であの今かなり日本はあの自生の農業があの滅びかけているのでちょっとファンタジーとしてみんな捉えたんじゃないかなと思っています。で悪はは存在しないはあのちょっとやっぱり浜口さんの,あの持つすごく理不尽さみたいな何が起きてるかわからないけど恐ろしいことだけは起きてるっていうでさっきと同じで因果関係がさっぱりわからないっていうまあ黒沢清監督の「キュア」を見た時もなぜこの人が死ななきゃいけないのかなぜ殺すのかっていう因果関係がわからないっていうでも何かそういうこう悪意が伝播するみたいな,なんかそう今の空気をものすごく描いてるなという点でやっぱ浜口さんってすごいちょっと本当にユニークな監督だなと思いました。So it's in diary、uh, based on a... すみません、原作は本ですかそうですあの宮田光友さんという人のエッセイですね、はい、本当に起きたことを書いている。So Zen Diary, the Zen Diary Diary is based on, on、uh, an essay. Um, so, on, on real events,、uh, although it's changed、uh, quite a bit in the film,、um, a novelist goes to live in the countryside and survives only on what? On the vegetables and produce that they grow themselves. So, it's lovely depictions of, of food, it's very、uh, beautiful, rich work.、Um, But with Japanese agriculture declining as it is today, I think a lot of people probably looked at it as a, as a work of fantasy.、Um, Evil Does Not Exist was the other one that you mentioned.、Um, and this has a very typically、uh, Hamaguchi sense of absurdity.、Um, you don't know what's happening, you just know that something frightening is happening.、Um, and again, it's a sense of there's no, there's no chain of cause and effect.、Um, Which is something that takes me back to、uh, Kurosawa's, Kyoshi Kurosawa's cure. And why does this person have to die?、Um, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason.、Um, but that is something that I find quite fitting,、um, quite、uh, relevant to today. And, and Hamaguchi is a very unique director. Apologies, I'm muted.、Um, uh, does anyone have any thoughts on anyone else have thoughts on that, or, or, or have we got time? I think we've got time for, for one or two more questions. So、um, we've got one、uh, asking about the difference between Western and Japanese films, or they feel that the Western films tend to like to have a neat and tidy ending with all those loose ends tied up, whereas Japanese films are comfortable leaving, leaving unanswered questions.、Um, oh, oh, there it is.、Um, And just, you know, if anyone had any thoughts on, on that、uh, related、um, to I, I don't know, man. I, I'd say that it really depends what kind of film you're looking at. I mean, commercial films in Japan,、uh, you know, it's a lot of which in the West we don't really get access to or we don't really see. I mean, I think they're roughly equivalent to, to commercial films、uh, over here. So if you look at an indie film,、um, certainly in the horror genre, You know, there's plenty of films that wrap up things neatly, and plenty of films which, which really don't.、Um, you only still get plenty of films in the independent art house scene or away from the mainstream, which deliberately end with a, either a cliffhanger or not explaining things. So I think it really depends on, more on the filmmaker and the kind of film you're watching. I don't really think it's a general、um, trend. Even with, within horror, you get very commercial Japanese horror and you get more art house type Japanese horror. So. あいいですか一つ,ああ一つ面白い議論があってあの先週あの是枝裕和監督の「怪物」をめぐるあの長いあのクイアの方からの,あの疑問をに答えるという長い長い是枝監督の提談が朝日新聞のウェブ版で発表されたんですけどその時にまあ怪物のラストがあの監督はかなりポジティブな。意味を込めて作ったんですけどそのクイアの方はものすごくあの悲観的なラストと受け取って、まあ、そのオープンエンディングがどうあるべきかっていうすごい長い議論が起きていて
そう,そう面白い議論になったんですけど多分ウェブで皆さんあの有料なんですけどご覧になれると思うんですけどまああのまあでもその時これさんはもしかしたらオープンエンディングっていうのはあんまり良くないのかもしれないみたいなことをご自身で今後は変わるかもしれないみたいなことをおっしゃっていて、まあ、もし皆さんが見てらっしゃったら怪物のラストって皆さんはどうとどっちに捉えたんだろうとお伺いしたいなという気持ちはあります。Uh, there was a, a very interesting debate that I saw last week、uh, about、uh, Corriere's latest film, Monster.、Um, it was on, on, the online, on the Asahi Shimbun online, and it was his response to criticism from、uh, queer audience members、um, about the ending of the film.、Uh, he intended for the ending to be positive,、uh, apparently, whereas、uh, the queer audience, or These、um, people in particular had taken it as a pessimistic ending.、Uh, and it was a long debate about the nature of open endings.、Um, it's available online, although probably behind a paywall.、Um, and Koreda himself ends up saying that may maybe he shouldn't leave the end so open and, and maybe he'll, he'll do something differently going forward. But I was wondering if anyone had seen that, what you thought of the ending of Koreda's monster. I, 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 I read somewhere, I mean, I, I wasn't sure. I kind of saw it as relatively you know, positive, but I did read on,、uh, I mean, hopefully this isn't a spoiler alert for people, but I did read cer certain people's interpretation that they'd seen it as actually,、um, you know, let's say the worst, the worst possible thing had happened, that it was a tragic ending, that it was which, without saying too much, if in case people haven't watched it,、um, but for those who have, we'll probably know what I'm alluding、mm. to. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of、uh, had assumed the worst because it is, it is maybe slightly left ambiguous.、Um, but I think that's maybe, I wasn't the biggest fan of the film, but I think it's maybe one of its strengths is that leaving that slight, slight ambiguity. And I think that the film really hinges on ambiguity throughout, I think, if people haven't seen it. So I think it felt of a piece. But does, it, does anyone else have any? Yeah, Julian, did you? Yeah, no. I, I just want to say I thought it was an interesting ending, especially because. The rest of the film felt so constructed and almost didactic, and、um, you know, kind of orienting the audience towards、uh, the characters like how I'm supposed to feel for this character. Oh, I actually shouldn't have felt that way.、Um, so, yeah, in, in that sense, the ending was more ambiguous than I thought the rest of the film was and more open to interpretation. Yeah. But I think in general, I do find、uh, many, at least recent.、Uh, Japanese cinema, independent cinema,、uh, being quite long and kind of、uh, not knowing or maybe not figuring out how to end things. And、uh, I, I say that as a point of critique, I think. <laughs> I, I often find, I mean, an open ending does have to be deliberate. It's like, you know, and, <laughs> and there has to be some meaning behind that choice, I think, rather than just kind of. Letting the story peter out and、um, kind of ending it just because. you know. So I feel like these films could be a bit more edited precisely.、Uh, I feel that's a general trend in、uh, independent Japanese cinema. They're often like two and a half hours long when they could be like an hour or less, I think.、Mm. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, talking of, talking of timings, I think that, that brings us very neatly.、Uh, On to, unfortunately, we're going to have to、uh, wrap it up there.、Um, I'm sure we could talk for a lot longer. There. There's some really、uh, other comments and, and questions that have come in、um, that would, I'm sure we'd, we'd, we'd really enjoy to answer, but unfortunately, we don't have any more time at present. But、um, so I'll、um, hand over to Junko, but thank you very much, everyone.、Uh, Thank you so much.、Um, that was an、um, interesting, very, very、um, uh, stimulating discussion. And、uh, all of you are my golden team. So <laughs> I'm so glad that、uh, it's very rare that we、um, gather the same sort of panel together and、uh, year after. But this year, you, all of you make my life so easy. So thank you so much. And、uh, I, I would guess what you're going to say. Oh, we don't have much time, you know, again, and we should do it again next year, perhaps. <laughs> so it's just, you know, pencil in your schedule diary. And the e s p e n s you know, way of you know, handling that question was really spot. Thank you so much. And everybody's comments. 
but very variable. And this time, uh, because you know we gather the list from the viewers, I hope that uh, all of you, if you manage to watch this sort of uh, this uh, session, find it more little bit more interactive than uh, um, just usual. Um, although it's still virtual, but. Um, um, uh, you can see that what uh, other people have chosen and as well as uh, those people who the panel have chosen for your you know, future reference. So please do uh, check you know, check up um, what uh, uh, the list, a list comprises. And uh, also my announcement is that, uh, as I said in the beginning, Turing Film Program is still on. And then if you want to see that Zen diary, which has been discussed, uh, there are still four venues left over, including Newcastle and Primus. And then also that uh, repo itself uh, has uh, two more uh, venues, including Cambridge. So that uh, if you're nearby, please drop in and then uh, check that uh, our touring film program uh, official site, where about that uh, films uh, would be screened. So that this could be the last jump. So just uh, check up and then just drop in if you can. But that's all from me. Thank you so much for the panels and for those people who uh, watched that uh, today's session. We will send you that questionnaire, so please complete it. And the thanks also goes to Bethan, who did excellent uh, interpretation as usual. Thank you so much, and uh, have a nice afternoon and uh, weekend. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.